This is a 1974 Toyota Celica. It is the only original unrestored Toyota Celica in Singapore. To find out more about this car, we have to take a trip back to Japan in 2019. I am Sean here. I currently work in the automotive industry. I deal with exports and local sales. So here is my Celica. The TA22 was one of the first few Japanese production cars that were considered as sports cars of sorts. It came together to Singapore together with the Mitsubishi GTO and the Datsun Triple S. So this car is running on a carbureted 1.6 2T engine mated to a 4-speed manual gearbox rear-wheel drive configuration. The Silica itself was my dad's first car ever when he was in his early 20s. He was basically almost penniless and he bought this car because he really liked the look and he spent like a few thousand dollars fixing it. So whenever we drive around our area and we see the red Celica, he was so captivated. He kept bugging me for around 10 years to just get one into Singapore. It was really hard to find one at the right price as well. So it just so happened that I came back to Singapore from my Japanese exchange in Tokyo and I found the advert for this car. I had to contact the seller, request him to reserve the car for me and I had to buy a last minute ticket paying two times the price premium to fly to Japan within the same week itself. There was some communication breakdown before I went to Japan as well as I actually had to request for some additional photos and specifications of the car but the seller was not able to understand me even though I kept it. While I did study Japanese for over three years, I still could not blend into Japanese society and my Japanese was bara bara, or they say, broken. So I actually had to rope in my Japanese university friend to go with me and purchase the vehicle. When I first saw the car, I was just so captivated by the original green color paintwork which I spent some time researching online. And while it had its imperfections such as a little rust spots here and there, it was pretty much original coming with the original aircon, rims and an uncracked dash. I was so excited that I had to FaceTime my father on the spot to make sure he saw this gem of a car. After purchasing this car, I found out that from the lock card, it only had one owner in Miyazaki. So he basically owned the car for 44 years, from 1974 till 2018. If I could meet the owner again, I would go on a ride with him and ask him where he's been with the car. From what I've seen in this car, he has been to Tokyo, even Osaka as well, which is quite crazy for a car which has travelled so little. 100,000 km over 47 years is quite crazy indeed. Upon purchasing the car, I had to stay in Japan just for a while more to settle all the shipping procedures and deregistration. I would like to thank Mamoru-san from Prosperity Logistics for helping me with this. Upon arrival, I had to contact one of my friends in Singapore who owns uh, Region Express, who deals with a lot of automotive imports and exports. So they basically helped me through the VITAS, which is the registration process for new and classic cars. LTA actually requested for a lot of documents from me, including the registration, deregistration, as well as the ownership certificates from Japan. They still requested everything to be translated. The worst happened when the car was about to get registered and the LTA officer actually requested for the catalogue of this vehicle. I happily sent him the Japanese version and he told me that I had to give it to him in English instead. That was when my nightmare started and I had to translate everything from page 1 to page 16 from Japanese to English. I had to grind day and night to do it and it was pretty much worth it. I actually got Vita's approval and I could get this car registered somewhere near my birthday. But after I got the approval, the government immediately started their circuit breaker and I couldn't get the car registered. I had to wait another 3 more months. So I was pretty much stray. La. Then the vehicle pretty much just passed inspection and registration in the first try because it's pretty much fully original from engine to exhaust 
and steering wheel, everything is stock. So they had nothing to scrutinize and they let it pass within the first try. When my dad actually saw this car for the first time and then when he got to drive it, he was all smiles and no complaints. For a car its age, there will definitely be rust, there will always be broken components. You don't know the number of times I've been scolded by my mechanic because of the amount of repairs this car has required. It took him a lot of effort to remove. In a way, I also felt very heart pain for him. But it is such a cool car, it drove like a piece of crap. Maybe it's because of my poor manual driving skills. But my dad told me this was what it was back then. It was really a true test of the driver's skills, how well you shifted, how you could control your clutch. No power steering is definitely no joke. I tried parking this car once in Chinatown. Parallel parking without power steering took me 10 tries. Show your muscles. Yeah, which is why I have a little bit of muscles now. After I replaced all the engine mountings and gearbox mountings, I could really tell the difference and it felt really rewarding to actually invest in making this car a better ride. I feel like liking classic cars should never be about age, but it should be more about passion and what you like. You shouldn't just accept societal norms, whether like, oh, you are too young to drive this car. There are some men that are my dad's age who have spoken to me about this car. It's like, hey, I know this car. This is a Celica. You know, I used to drive a GTO and I used to race against a Celica. So it, it feels like I am preserving Singapore's lost treasures of sorts. I'm incredibly thankful to Arthur and Charlie for introducing me to their own little Friends of Classics group. From there, which I have met a lot of fellow classic car enthusiasts, even though most of the cars there are European makes. From there, I've actually met good friends such as Winston, Winston, Melvin and Leonard. I hope this video was more or less informative and I hope to see fellow classic car enthusiasts and owners coming up to join us for our meets. You don't necessarily have to own a classic car, but you can just feel free to come forward to us and just talk to us and ask us more questions about our classic cars. We will be more than welcome to answer every single burning question of yours. Thank you for watching another very special episode on Seng TV Stories. If you know a story or have a story you would like to tell us, do drop us a message in our email or social media platforms. Once again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on another episode. Wow, really no bounce there.